Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash Entitled People, where people truly believe that they can do what they want, when they want, because they're special. And in today's episode, we've got Karen's causing trouble yet again, guys. And Opie tells a story about the time she broke her leg at a birthday party, only to get yelled at by the birthday girl for taking attention away from her. Guys, I hope you enjoy the stories, don't shake your heads too hard, and as always, you can send or link your post to this email right here, let's dive in. This happens way back in the early 2000s, when I was in elementary school. I was the kid who was never any popular or had many friends. I was known as the overweight kid who could not stand up for myself, and I got picked on a lot. Anyways, with that said, I've had asthma since I was a toddler, so I always had to keep an inhaler with me. But one day, some classmates thought they could mess with it. This took place outside shortly after a recess started. I had problems catching my breath for a few days, but on this day, it was much worse. I had taken my inhaler out of my pocket, and I was about to use it, when a kid who we'll call Dennis, the class bully, comes over. Suddenly, this kid was standing beside me, and before I could say anything or pull away, he snatches my inhaler out of my hands. Dennis then said to me, Hey fatty, what's this weird toy you have? It looks funny. I tell him, that's my medicine for my asthma, and it's not a toy. I need it when I can't breathe properly, so give it back. At that, Dennis replies, not breathing properly? Never have I ever heard such a stupid story before. Well, let's see if you can breathe, or you're lying so I don't take it. With that, he ran towards his friend to show her his newest acquisition. He says to his friend, hey Mel, look what I took away from the whale over there. Do you know how to use this? While they were fumbling with it, I was slowly getting an asthma attack, and I started to panic. I knew I needed that damn spray, and I had no chance to get it back from those idiots anytime soon. A few moments later, Mel began to scream, and Dennis throws my inhaler onto the school roof. Apparently, he somehow sprayed it in her face, and of course, seconds later, a teacher who was supervising recess walks over and asks what was going on. The two kids screamed that nothing was going on. Meanwhile, my attack had gotten worse. I remember mustering up all the courage in me in that moment to say that Dennis had stolen my inhaler, and then threw it on the school roof. And with that, the teacher sends both of us to the principal's office. When I arrived there, I was looking like I could suffocate at any second, and the school nurse hands me an extra inhaler that my parents had given them for emergencies or in case I forgot mine at home. Luckily, the principal was nice to me, and he knew Dennis was a troublemaker, so his mom was called. The school janitor had to go onto the school roof to retrieve my inhaler. And as far as I know, Dennis and his mom had a meeting with the principal, and Dennis was suspended for a few days. But that's not all. Even though this happened over 20 years ago, I'll never forget what happened after that. I was playing in the park after school with my friends one day, when Dennis and his mom marches up to me. He pointed out the little boy that got him suspended. His mom then screamed at me for being pathetic and ratting out her son and getting him suspended. She then said that because of my stupid inhaler, Dennis was one suspension away from getting expelled from the school. My friend then said something snarky to her about maybe he should act good in school, and in a fit of rage, she said to me that I'm just too stupid to breathe like normal people, and then she marched to her car. They never bothered me again, and Dennis moved away a few months later. I don't know what happened to him. Guys, the entitlement of the parent, right? The fact that she approaches an elementary age kid and she had no issues yelling at them is wild. Like, instead of telling your son what he did was very stupid and wrong, she decided to go after OP and get mad at OP, saying they're the reason her son was suspended. Great parenting. Like, are you kidding me? I guess the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree, hey? And the comment about OP being too stupid to breathe normally, oh my goodness, some parents would start swinging if a Karen said that to their child. But hey, some people do what they want and say what they want, and the thing is, a lot of people do get away with it, which just causes their entitlement to snowball. So here is some background. Me and this one girl, Emily, used to be best friends back in grade school. She had shown some entitlement before, but I usually brushed it off as she was tired, sad, or cranky. I always made up some excuse for her. I don't know why, to be honest. Anyways, because Emily had her birthday coming up, she invited me and a few other friends. Now this party was at a roller skating rink, and I loved roller skating, so of course I said yes. With that, on to the story. The day came, and I got her a present and everything. It was the best. 
A few hours of skating later, the announcer at the roller rink called out that it was time to play some games, like racing, limbo, match the number, hokey pokey, you get it. And that's when I decided to do something stupid. I had seen other people stop skating by doing this trick where they skidded to a screeching halt, all while maintaining their balance, and I decided to try to do that. The only problem was I had never done that before. I end up losing my balance and falling backwards while my left leg folds underneath me. And I'll never forget the sickening crack of bones I heard when I landed. At first, I was in shock and my brain hadn't registered the pain yet so I was laying on the ground. No one came to help me at first because they assumed I'd just fallen. But within seconds, my brain realized, oh, this is painful. And with that, I start sobbing. I just ripped my skate off and curled into a fetal position, cradling my leg close to me. Then someone realizes that I wasn't okay and they rushed over to help me. When they realized I couldn't stand, they called for a wheelchair. It was only then that Emily realized that something was happening. That was because no one was looking at her anymore. And they were all staring my way with mixed expressions of shock and empathy. When Emily finally looked my way, she did seem shocked at first, but her face just morphed into a glare. I'll spare you all the other details, but my leg was broken so badly, I ended up going to the hospital via ambulance. The rest of the story will be told from my mom's perspective, as I was riding in the ambulance with my dad. Mom stayed back to drive the car to the hospital. According to my mom, after I left, Emily went straight to her mom and she starts complaining. She was saying, ugh, I can't believe her. Her breaking her leg totally ruined my birthday party. And I bet she did it on purpose. I bet she couldn't stand the attention I was getting. She's probably not even that hurt. Why can't my birthday be all about me? Why do stupid people have to ruin it? Her mom just replies, I know, sweetie, I'm sorry. Accidents happen. I'll take you out to eat later and for ice cream to make up for it. And I think it's time we wrap up this party too. So go tell your friends it's time to go. So with that, Emily went to go tell them the party's over so that she and her mom could go with my mom to the hospital. My mom said that when Emily told her friends the party was over, it was because that I on purpose hurt myself to sabotage her birthday party because I was jealous and that I had wanted all the attention because again, I was so jealous that it was her birthday and not mine. My mom was pissed when she overheard Emily, but of course, she didn't do anything because one, it's none of her business what she happened to overhear, and two, she had bigger things to deal with, like a daughter with broken bones. Eventually, Emily and her mom left with my mom to go see me. And according to my mom, Emily was glaring out the window the entire time, grumbling under her breath over and over again how I ruined her party, and I was probably lying about being hurt. Well, guess what? I wasn't. After I got to the hospital, they took x-rays, and they determined I had two broken bones. I had snapped both my tibia, which is the big bone in your calf that spans to your knee, and my growth plate, the bone in your ankle that helps you grow. I had broken my bone so bad that it warranted surgery, and that's what I got. Emily never did apologize to me for saying that stuff. Hey, with best friends like that, who needs enemies, right? Let's not check on your best friend who fell and injured themselves. Instead, let's just tell everyone that your best friend broke their bones on purpose because they were jealous. They were jealous it was your birthday. And guys, I read a lot of these stories, okay? And I don't even think a Karen would on purpose break her leg to get attention. And that's saying a lot. So back in September 2008, my grandmother had a heart attack and had to be hospitalized. I had recently moved out of my parents' home, and my stepbrother too had moved out just a year earlier. When my dad and stepmom were taking turns staying with her in the hospital, my aunt would drop by just for a few minutes, make small talk, and leave. Now, small talk and a visit was fine, but what wasn't fine is she kept suggesting that my dad should put down our dog, Dennis. That's right kill him. The reason she gave for this kick-in-the-ass worthy advice was that Dennis was a black dog, and black dogs bring bad luck to anyone who owns them, saying this is why grandmother had the heart attack. She kept saying that her mother was obviously in the hospital because of the dog, and certainly not because of her health conditions. And seriously, everyone in the family saw that grandma wasn't a healthy person. Despite being diabetic and having high cholesterol, she refused to stop stuffing her face with fried junk and sweets, so yeah. My dad, of course, told her to shut her trap. And just a few days later, grandmother kicked the bucket. 
cue insane wailing and crying from my aunt, while going on and on about how she wouldn't have lost her mom if we only listened to her and had that damn dog put down. And you may wonder why she was so obsessed with getting rid of Dennis. It's because Dennis had never liked her or her husband and son. He would growl at them any time they came near him. He was a smart dog, and I guess he could sense what crappy people they were. Dennis was a mongrel, 24 inches at the withers, and he weighed around 90 pounds. So of course when he growled, it appeared intimidating. She was also really jealous of him, and always commenting on how we were wasting money by feeding and caring for him. Of course, grandmother's illness and subsequent death gave crazy Aunt Karen an opportunity to get revenge. I began to fear for Dennis as soon as I heard what that piece of crap said. Since my stepbrother couldn't make it, I decided to take time off work to go to my dad's place. This was to mostly watch over Dennis and make sure that Karen and her family didn't get a chance to harm him. My dad made arrangements for the funeral and talked to the priest, etc., while stepmom and I cooked and got the house ready. My aunt was there too, but mostly milking the occasion, and she was crying fake crocodile tears for attention. She was being a crying, wailing basket case. She was going on and on how the dog had brought bad luck to the house. However, when my stepmom told me to cook Dennis's chicken stew for him while she took a bath and got dressed, my aunt began to act real funny. She would hang around the kitchen, near the food, on the pretense of making small talk with me, and it was really weird because she never tried to talk to me. This was the most that she's ever spoken to me in years. I just gave her one-word responses, hoping she would F off. Just as I got the stew off the burner, I hear my dad walk through the front door. He was calling out to me to help him bring stuff inside. So I began walking towards the front gate in a hurry. However, as I reached the front door, I was overcome with a horrible feeling. In my haste, I had left crazy aunt alone with Dennis's food. So I run back to the kitchen, with my dad asking me what the hell was wrong. I enter the kitchen to find that monumental C word, which is the only word to describe her at the moment, pouring some sort of white substance into Dennis's food. My father took it from my aunt's hands and instantly identified it as a rat poison. The substance got dissolved into the stew and it disappeared, leaving no trace of foul play. If my aunt hadn't gotten caught, we would have surely lost our beloved family member. My aunt just stood there with a deer in headlights look on her face. I can't remember the last time I'd seen my dad so angry. He told her that she was to attend grandmother's funeral and then never show him her face again. Well, I somehow overcame the urge to throttle her. At that point, my stepmom too had joined us and she was told what happened. My aunt somehow stammered that she was doing what was right for the family, repeating the nonsense about black dogs bringing bad luck, and if she didn't put an end to it, one of us could be next. Of course, no one was having it. My uncle arrived shortly afterwards, and in spite of being a grade A a-hole himself, he did have the decency to look ashamed when he was told what his wife had tried to pull. My dad didn't speak to them for over two years. He only contacted them again when he found out that they were in dire states financially. As for Dennis, he was a good boy. He lived a long and healthy life. He passed away last year at the age of 14, surrounded by those who truly loved him. Oh man, psycho Aunt Karen at it again, guys. And do people really think that black dogs are bad luck? Because I've never heard of that. Black cats, everyone knows that, but black dogs, I had no idea. But like OP said, guys, she was probably looking for a reason to get rid of Dennis because he doesn't seem to like her. Which, if that was the case, maybe OP should have throttled her. And in my opinion, that's letting her get off easy, guys, because if you go to someone's house and you decide to do something as crazy as putting poison into their pet's food, yeah, some people would say, forget the police, call the damn coroner because that person won't be leaving alive. So long ago, way back in the before time, I worked for one of those bulk warehouse club stores. My trade was simple. I was a wrangler of the silver buffalo, and dutifully retrieved the shopping carts I did. Now, the job itself wasn't the worst I've ever had. I got plenty of exercise, got to be outside, and didn't have to interact with the members for the most part. The thing about this job is that the company I worked for had a reputation for being cheap. Thusly, more often than not, I was out on my own in the parking lot. Big whoop, you might say. You gather shopping carts, you should see how hard my job is. And to that I say, well shut up. The only reason being alone sucked is that this store didn't have just one kind of cart. Hell, they didn't have just two kinds of carts. 
You had your classic garden variety cart, the kitty cart with the plastic facade to make it resemble a car, the electric scooters which weren't supposed to leave the store but did so with alarming frequency, and finally, the bulky, hard to control flatbeds. On top of that, when someone needed help loading their haul into their minivans, I was the guy they called. You know, because the greeters, cashiers, and managers were all busy. As you might expect, one man can't be in multiple places at once, and as a result, on some of the busier days, it became incredibly difficult to keep enough carts in the corral. With that said, our story begins on one of these days. So there I was, chugging along like a good worker, struggling to keep up with the sheer volume of people coming in to buy cheap bulk goods. And sure enough, I get a call on the radio. It's the manager, and they tell me, we need you to help some members load their purchases. I tell the manager, uh, I would love to, but I'm barely able to keep up out here as is. Manager tells me to just do it, that I can afford to stop gathering carts for two minutes. I didn't want to push my luck, so I complied. After spending 20 minutes loading people's purchases because when one person needs it, suddenly they all need it, I come back to find my corral a near ghost town, save for a single line of carts that was half gone, and a woman who we'll call the Karen. I won't waste time describing this person, she was the prototype, and you know what she looked like. There she stood, menacing, tapping her foot with such speed that could make any metal drummer green with envy. You could collect the contempt in her gaze in a jar. She then spoke and said, where are the big flat ones? At that, I blank for a moment and say, uh, I'm sorry? That's when Karen says, ugh, Mexicans. And for the record, I'm very much white. She then repeats herself slowly and says, where are the flat ones? I say to her, oh, you mean the flatbeds, I'm sorry, I was just helping some other members load their merchandise, and I haven't had a chance to. She then interrupts me and says, oh my god, I don't care about your excuses. You have one damn job, and a trained monkey could do it. At that point, I just want the lady out of my face, so I don't fight it. I just tell her, sorry ma'am, I'll go grab one for you. Karen says, you'd better. So I go back to the lot to find a whole line of flatbeds sticking out of the corral, blocking several parking spaces. I push them all into the vestibule where she waits, huffing about how I'm wasting her valuable time. I separate one from the rest and then bring it to her. I say to her, I'm terribly sorry about the wait, ma'am. She then leers at me with utter malice and says, huh, unbelievable. And with that, she dismisses herself to the store where she'll be someone else's problem, and I shake my head and return to what I'm paid to do. Fifteen minutes later, I'm returning a line of cards when I see her pushing her flatbed to her Miata, and jawing about stupid people, most certainly referring to me on her cell phone. And you know what she bought? What she had insisted on having a flatbed for? One single cake. And it wasn't even like a big cake, it was one of those little circular cakes, like the one you buy for small birthdays. Anyways, I witness as she continues to yammer on how I nearly ruined, ruined I tell you, her precious baby's birthday party, when the most glorious thing happened. Still clutching her phone with those scoop claws of hers, she attempts to pick up the cake with one hand, and the plastic topper pops off, and the cake spills all over her, and then onto the ground. Seething with white hot rage, she locks eyes with me, and she says, You, go get me another cake right now. I just tell her, I'm terribly sorry ma'am, I've got one job, and these carts won't gather themselves. And with that, I walked away, with a grin plastered on my face as her shrieks just fade into the distance behind me. I've had my share of nasty customer interactions before, but this one, this one really took the cake. Talk about karma doing its job, right? And I would have loved to have been there to see the cake just plop onto the ground and Karen just losing her crap. And I gotta admit guys, that was the perfect pun to end this awesome post. Absolutely love it. I'm a 24 year old female and I live with my boyfriend who's 27. For some context, we've been dating for 4 years and living together 8 months. We live in an apartment that I inherited along with one more other house that I rent out and some cash inheritance. On to the story. So me and my boyfriend, we both love playing video games. We both have full-time jobs, but still find time to play together as well. He's also a much better player than I am. He plays tournaments and competitions, where I just play for fun. A few months ago, my boyfriend started talking about getting a new PC, and other items he wanted to upgrade, and how he was saving up for it. 
I was okay with it, since we have separate finances. He doesn't pay the utilities, but he splits groceries, which wasn't an issue because I had extra income from the rental property. I thought I could use my inheritance money and get myself a nice brand new computer setup as well. I took suggestions from YouTube and some friends. I scheduled delivery for the day I knew he won't be home all day. So the setup came and they sent someone from the store to set it up for me. I used the PC for a while and it was amazing. My boyfriend came home during the evening and he saw my new PC. I was so excited to see his reaction but his face remained very dull. He then looked at me and asked why it was on my side of the room. I told him it's because it was mine. He then asked me to confirm that I bought his dream PC setup for myself. And I said yes, and at that, he got visibly mad, and then said, it's useless for you. We should just swap, you don't even play well, and you won't be able to use it to its full potential. You can have mine. At first, I laughed, because I genuinely thought he was joking. But when I realized he was being serious, I told him no. I said, I bought this for me. That's when he blew up at me, and he told me that I need to buy the same one for him as well. When I said no again, he started yelling how unfair I was being and how I won't be able to appreciate technology like this since I'm too dumb to even understand the specs. By that point, I was losing my lid, so I told him to get out. He grabbed a few items and left to stay with his best friend. Now his best friend and a few other friends are blowing up my phone, saying that as a girl, I shouldn't own something so expensive, and that I don't understand, and I could buy him the same setup since I can afford it because I'm rich. I don't have any loans, so it's not like I'm saving the money for something particular, which is making me doubt if I was the a-hole in this situation. Update. It's 11pm here right now and I'm kind of shocked at everything that happened today. I made the original post in the morning before I left to work. While I was at work, I received an alert from my security system. So I check my front door cam and I see my boyfriend at the door walking in with his key. Something didn't feel right, so I checked the camera in our game room, the one we use for streams. I set it up in the morning before leaving just in case. Now I feel so much better that I did. I see him trying to unplug my monitor and I immediately call the police. By the time I reach home, two officers are waiting outside the door with my boyfriend. My boyfriend claimed that he was just at the apartment to get some stuff, like clothes and other essentials. I had no energy to argue, so I just show the camera footage and he starts apologizing. He then goes on and on how his friends riled him up to steal my system to teach me a lesson. And what bothers me the most is that he hadn't texted me once. Not a single call or anything, his first instinct was to break into my apartment. The cops asked me if I wanted to press charges, and I said no. And I know most of you won't be happy with this, but I kind of want this to be done. I asked him for my key back, and told him I'll send his PC and the other stuff to whatever address he wants later. But I don't want him or his friends to come over. And if I receive a single accusatory text from him or his friends, I will go ahead and press charges. He kept trying to apologize, but I stood my ground, and I'm genuinely surprised at how I didn't break down in front of him. I'm still in disbelief at how my 4 year long relationship just crumbled in 24 hours over a PC. Yeah, that relationship ended when the guy listened to his idiot friends and broke into his girlfriend's place to steal her PC. Like steal it and take it where, dude? What was your plan? Because clearly all he did was make himself look super childish by doing that. And thank goodness OP ended things because that dude was entitled as heck. Like he lives rent free, doesn't pay utilities, and only pays half the groceries, and he still had the audacity to demand money from her to buy him a new PC? Guys, let me know what you think of this crazy situation. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss these crazy stories. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's an r slash malicious compliance episode where a Karen learns not to mess with an army veteran. Guys, it's such a wild story. Go check it out if you haven't and myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.